Well, hello everybody and happy new year to you. 22 twos come round pretty jolly quickly, hasn't it? And we've got some pretty nice photographic gear coming up to show you in the year ahead. Now, imagine if I told you there is a vintage lens that is as sharp as a Carl Zeiss Jena Pancola with fantastic colours and a tiny minimum focus distance and which is very cheaply available too from around about £20 or so. Would you be interested? Well, of course, there are many, many cheap vintage lenses available. There are Russian lenses like this Jupiter 8 here, like the Helios 44, the Indostar 61, and those are all great lenses. There are loads of 50mm 1.8s around from the Western manufacturers like Pentax, Canon, Nikon, and those are some great lenses too, but they are more expensive than the one I'm going to show you today at around about 40 to 60 pounds. These ones I'm going to show you are much cheaper. They cost from around 10 to 25 pounds. I'm talking about this lens. It's the Carl Zeiss Jena Tessar f2.8 50 millimeters. And this is the cheapest of the Carl Zeiss Jena lenses. It's a little slower than many 50s, but it is a very, very high quality optic. You can often buy them with a Practica camera too for around £20 and buying that way means you get a free film SLR as well so that can't be bad. Now Tessars are a simple lens design. They have three elements only but don't let that deceive you. This is a very very high quality optic with all the inherent sharpness of the Tessar design plus great contrast, really good colour, and a very close minimum focus distance of, I think it's 30 centimetres. Yes, it is 30 centimetres, so this lens will go really close. Now, these were made for many years. The earlier design had a zebra finish like this one, and the later designs were all black. I can't see much difference in the results. They seem pretty similar. Both can give a very beautiful image. So before we go any further, let's have a closer look. So here are both our Caesar J f2.8 50mm lenses. And you can see that they are very similar, except in terms of decoration and style. For some curious reason, the Zebra version looks a little bit bigger, but it's actually not. The dimensions are identical. Personally, I prefer the black version for its looks, but that's just a personal thing. I can't see any difference in the coatings on these two lenses. They both look pretty much identical. The focus ring on these lenses is at the front here and the aperture ring is at the back and as I say we've got that 30 centimeter minimum focus distance which is very very versatile indeed and it also means that this lens will give you some blur in fact quite a lot of blur at that minimum focus distance the aperture rings at the back as I say so it's all nice and simple to operate it's got an M42 mount, so it will mount to literally thousands, possibly tens of thousands of film SLRs. And of course, it will mount to any digital mirrorless camera as well. It does have the same style of construction as all the other CZJ lenses that I've looked at. And as far as I can tell, I may be wrong, but as far as I can tell, I think that this is an all metal lens. So what's this lens actually like in action? Well, it's really good actually. Let's begin with blur. And there is quite a lot available from this lens, especially with the help of that very close minimum focus distance. And 
it's extremely well behaved blur as well. Whatever I did, whatever the distances between camera, subject and background, I just couldn't unsettle this blur. There is no harshness that I could find. It just stays soft and that's a real achievement for a vintage lens and very unusual. I've shot many more, far more expensive vintage lenses than this and there is usually a harsh spot somewhere or other to be found but not this one it's just quite extraordinary in that regard now f2.8 is a little bit slow it's not going to give you quite so much blur as a 1.4 or a 1.2 but it does give you loads of blur at short distances it still gets subject to background separation at shorter distances and importantly for me anyway this is a czj lens so it gives you some swirl and sometimes that swirl is really beautiful it's not quite so overwhelming as in a wider aperture swirler like the helios 44 for example it's nice and restrained and you just get a hint of it and it really is very beautiful Sharpness is an area where this little lens really scores. It's very sharp from wide open at f2.8 and it captures loads of detail. In fact, it's one of the sharpest lenses I've ever shot wide open and that really is saying something. f2.8, well, it's a little bit slow on paper, of course, but most vintage lenses I've used need to be stopped down to f2.8 to achieve maximum sharpness. The Zuiko 55mm f1.2, for example, is very soft, fully open, and it really doesn't achieve its maximum sharpness until f2.8, and that's true also of most vintage 1.4s I've used. So what are we actually gaining by using these more expensive lenses when this one will shoot so sharp from wide open at f2.8. Now, like all lenses, of course, this one will get even sharper if you stop it down, but not by that much. It's not quite as sharp wide open as the Carl Zeiss Jena Pancola, that is this lens's bigger brother, another 50mm. That's the sharpest vintage lens I've ever used, but it's not far off, and for the price, it really is quite something. Contrast is pretty good. This lens will give you strong blacks and crisp, clean whites. The older lens, this Zebra one, seems a bit more prone to contrast dropping because of stray light. I can't see any difference in the coating, so it might well be that this older version needs a clean the black version did extremely well in terms of contrast and I couldn't find any drop in contrast nor could I find any light bleed from areas of uh, very bright light into areas of uh, darkness. So it's not the most contrasty lens I've ever used but it's very good nonetheless. When it comes to colour, well, it's a little more muted than most Carl Zeiss Siena lenses I've tried. It's less saturated, but it's still very nice. Colours are punchy, strong and bold. You might call them realistic slash naturalistic colours. And I think generally speaking, colours are nice from this lens but a little muted. So if the muted look isn't for you, shoot in your camera's vivid setting. I think this is a great little lens. It's very cheap. It's very well made. It's very sharp. It's got really nice blurs, some of the nicest I've ever seen from a vintage lens, and it makes fantastic images too. It's a great starter lens. And it's a great lens in itself just to, you know, buy and play around with. And from 10 to 20 pounds, it's practically free. So that's it from me for this time. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and ring that jolly old 
bell thing before you go. And if you like the content on this channel and you'd like to support it and help it grow and develop, you can do that at patreon.com forward slash xenography. As ever, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time for some more xenography.